in the Ruchuru province, many Christians looked as gloomy as the sky. Despite the big celebrations of the Eastern Tridium, Congolese from the eastern part of DRC were not in the mood. The M23 rebel group who fights the army in the North Kivu province forced over 36,000 to flee within the country. And according to the UN, over 10,000 left the area towards Uganda. If the end of clashes in some localities has brought back some villages, others never left in the first place. Most people ran away, but we stayed here. That is why we are happy to celebrate Easter. We thank God again for giving us the strength to stay alive until now. We are thankful to our parish priest who has just arrived. We thought he was dead. He brought us the Eucharist. May God be praised with the Easter celebration. We had fled Uchuru, but we have just returned. We have seen our priest and we are happy. Unlike her, many Ruchura residents were barred from gathering because of the state of siege and the curfew. In his Easter address, Pope Francis remembered war victims in the DRC and prayed for peace to reign, soothing words for this Catholic. We would like to go and celebrate with the Pope when he arrives in Kibumba, but we don't know if he will be able to. God willing, he will gift us the breath of life, and we will be able to celebrate with the Pope. If the rebellion said it would withdraw from villages that came under its control, the group hasn't retreated from all captured localities. Humanitarian aid is still needed and residents traumatized. In the UK, critics are still pouring after the British government signed a deal with Rwanda to offshore asylum seekers. In his Easter homily, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, said the UK was a nation formed by Christian values and therefore subcontracting out its responsibilities was the opposite of the nature of God. The UNHCR said the deal was contrary to the letter and spirit of the Refugee Convention. Why there are such serious ethical questions about sending asylum seekers overseas. The details are for politics and politicians. The principle must stand the judgment of God, and it cannot. It cannot carry the weight of resurrection justice. It cannot carry the weight of life-conquering death. It cannot carry the weight of the resurrection that was revealed first to the least valued. For as a policy, it privileges the rich and the strong. And it cannot carry the weight of our national responsibility as a country formed by Christian values. Because subcontracting out our responsibilities, even to a country that seeks to do well, like Rwanda, is the opposite of the nature of God, who himself took responsibility for our failures. The Home Office defended the plan, saying the UK had a proud history of supporting those in need, adding Rwanda was safe and secure and would process claims in accordance with international human rights laws. Tunisian Navy divers reached Sunday the site of the fuel tanker which sank one day earlier. On footage provided by the Ministry of the Environment and the Ministry of Defence, divers are seen starting operations in the Gulf of Gabes off Tunisia's southeast coast. The good weather enabled the tanker's captain and the mechanics to accompany Tunisian officials. Leila Shihawi, the Environment Minister and Transport Minister Moez Chakchuk, examined the protective booms put around the ship to contain any oil slick. The tanker was carrying 750 tons of fuel from Egypt to Malta when it sank. The Gulf of Gabas, an important fishing area with over 400,000 inhabitants, has already suffered from pollution episodes. Even if the authorities have been reassuring, the Tunisian branch of the World Wildlife Fund said it feared a new environmental catastrophe in the region. Preliminary findings suggested there had not been any oil spill.
The Equatorial Guinea flagged oil tanker Zelu, which sank Saturday in the Gulf of Gabes along Tunisia, has been checked with divers finding no leaks from the fuel laden ship. The Tunisian branch for Wildlife Fund has also expressed concern about another environmental catastrophe in the region, an important fishing zone. The Zelu was traveling from Egypt to Malta when it went down. The Tunisian Navy divers checked the ship as a priority. We can say with certainty and before anything else that there are no leaks and that the holds of the ship are intact. The crew of the Zelu had issued a distress call on Friday evening and sought shelter in Tunisian waters from bad weather before going down. An Italian ship specialized in cleaning up marine pollution will be sent alongside a team of divers to aid with efforts. Tunisian authorities are also investigating the itinerary of the tanker, which reportedly had Turkish and Libyan owners. Authorities have found six more bodies amid ongoing rescue operations following devastating flooding in South Africa's east coast. KwaZulu Nata Premier assured South African search mission were back in full swing despite having been impacted by extensive damage to the province. As of this morning, KwaZulu Natal received 38 call outs, and on the scenes that were attended, six bodies were recovered. We stand at approximately 63 persons missing or unaccounted for. The death toll now stands at 443. This morning, the Executive Council approved the provincial policy on government support funeral assistance to people who passed away as a result of flood disasters. Municipalities have policies to assist the needy and the indigent and are currently uh, conducting profiling uh, in line with these policies. Survivors of the deadly floods in the rural town of Inanja in eastern South Africa sought divine solace observing Easter Sunday. Inanja, a rural township 30 kilometers from the city of Durban central business district, was one of the areas devastated by heavy flooding that has killed 443 people and left more than 40,000 homeless. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.